Welcome to this new tutorial about fixed networks, a computer mod for satisfactory. Today we're gonna talk about the reflection viewer. The reflection viewer is part of many main UIs like from the network manager. In the network manager you have the reflection viewer tab, which allows you to access the reflection viewer. The reflection viewer allows you to have a look at all the different types fixed network supports, their properties, their functions as well as their signals. While looking at a network component, you can hold control while opening up the network manager to directly go into the reflection viewer and have a look at the type of that component you're looking at. The text in italic you can see here is the internal descriptor name of this component. This is a name that has like no spaces and tries to follow C naming guidelines. The text in bold after that is the human readable display name, which can be at some point even be localized. Directly under it you can find the description of this type or any kind of thing you're looking at in the, uh, in the net in the reflection viewer. Under the description you can find a list of all the different items this type, uh, type has. Properties are shown with this orange name here, this orange identifier. This is a member property. A property is just simply a single value that this object can hold. Member properties are things in the world, like one specific constructor. Class properties are just simple properties related to the type itself, like the, con the type as a constructor. After that, you can, uh, after the identifier, you can find the data type of the property. Then the internal name of the property, just like with the type, which is a C-like name without any spaces, which is also used as is in, for example, lure code. Then you can see again, uh, maybe localized display name of the property and then a multitude of different kind of flags for that property. The RO or read only flag just means that you cannot set this property. You can only get the value of the property. You cannot set it. If the RO is not set, like with the standby here, that all that means you can also set the value of that standby property. Functions work in a similar way, though the identifier shows member function instead of member property, same as for class functions. Functions are uh, just simple actions you can call within your code to happen. These may trigger different, a variety of different things or also maybe just input or output data. Usually functions are uh, more heavy than properties so they actually do a lot more stuff in the background. So it's better to use properties over functions if possible. But usually also caching all the way through would be the best. You again can see at first uh, internal name of the function which is also used as is within for example Lua code. After that you can find a localized display name of this function. After that you can find a parameter list. The parameter list is just a, essentially a list of different properties um, or parameters with a name like recipe and a data type like class recipe and also a flag. This flag may be there. If the flag, if the output parameter flag is set, that means this parameter is actually outputted afterwards. Uh, so it, re it gets returned out of this function because you may also have multiple, multiple return values. Multiple parameters can have this output flag. If the output flag is not set, that means it's a, just a normal input value, just like you can see in this set recipe here. Set recipe takes the recipe and uh, of the type class recipe as an input value and then returns a boolean which is got set. Signals are shown with a green MS for member signal. Signals are just simple events that can uh, the the component may trigger itself and then tell the computers which are listening to that signal that this event has occurred. Such an event usually only has return values. You cannot give, give the component something because it just randomly happened and at the end you have some data that tells you what actually happened. You again find a fir at first a normal internal name which is used as is in Lua code for example and then a localized human readable name and then again uh, just like in functions a parameter list of the different data types. 
In the reflection view, you can hover over all the different highlighted or more important things to get a more detailed uh, explanation on what the different things mean, so you have a more brief overview of what actually goes on. You can also cl double click on the different items to open up in a, a more detailed explanation about this uh, specific property for example. In the properties you can also see this is uh, uh, this is within the speaker pole. You can double uh, you can also just click on the speaker pole to return to the speaker pole. Functions work in a similar way. You can double click it and to have a inf uh, to have a view on the actual function. Again what uh, name it has, what parameters it has. You can also jump again back to the parent, which is the speaker pole in this case, or you can also return a list of inventories this actor might have. So the, like this is the description and you also have a more uh, better list of all the different parameters this function might have. You can also again double click on this parameter to get a more detailed explanation about what this parameter does. Signals work, uh, work in the same way just as functions do. On the right side you can see the hierarchy list of the type and their inheritance. This is the speaker, uh, the speaker pole here and it inherits from this given speaker pole. There is not really a big change in between, but there still is. But if we go one step further up you can see the FG build able has way less functions available than the speaker pole itself. The speaker pole also has all the different functions of the inheritance classes like the buildable we just have seen. If you want to filter this out, just uncheck the show recursive check. With this you can only see the function this exact type now adds to this type. If you now go for example one step up, you can see these functions are added by this speaker pole uh, class. If you go up, the, the buildable doesn't add anything. Then we go up an actor and you can see this is all the stuff an actor adds. As you might also have seen now, the type that is actually one step in. It also shows all the different children this type might have. So you can see an uh, actor uh, can be a buildable, can also be a vehicle, can also be a timetable or a train. So if you check out the train, you can see train has these uh, new functions and so on and is uh, and inherits from the actor. Fixed network supports a variety of different data types. For example, float is a floating point value. So like uh, values like 0.5, 1.27 or something like that. Booleans are just simple truth values like true or false. Integers are whole numbers like minus one, zero, one, two, three, and so on. str stands for string, which is a stri uh, which is just simply a text. Classes refer to a to just simply a type, like the type of a recipe, because there are multiple ty types of recipes essentially, because each recipe is its own type. And class recipe just refers to the type of the recipe, so actually what recipe it is. Structures are essentially just a collection of multiple different values. You can double click on uh, these orange links like in structures, classes, arrays and so on. Double click those to have a more in, uh, to have a more f better view on how this actually looks like. Like this vector con just simply contains three different float values. The object data type and the trace data type are very similar. They just simply refer to a given thing like an inventory of a component or uh, the component itself or something like that. Traces are very important. For example, imagine the computer has referenced this constructor and uh, just holds it in memory. It processes some stuff and in the meantime someone cuts the connection between the computer and the constructor. The computer now doesn't have any more uh, any more access to the constructor. Only traces can reflect this change. If you have a normal object reference, this means the computer will still be able to access the constructor. And last but not least, we also support an array data type, which is just simply a list of values. Functions and properties may have the runtime flags, which just simply tell you when this function can be executed. The runtime synchronous flag tells you this function can be executed in a synchronous call. This is essentially every time within a frame, so that the whole game thread only processes this function. Runtime parallel means the function can be processed in the factory tick. A factory tick is essentially 
um, when ta items get transferred between conveyors and machines do some stuff and, uh, and so on. And this is a, sm a small little space within the normal game tick, well, uh, where these interactions may happen on multiple different threads at the same time. And runtime asynchronous means this function can be called anytime, for example, also on a different thread. On the left hand side you can see the, all the different types and their um, simple list of the different items they have, like properties, functions and signals. You can use the search field to just simply search for different, uh, th uh, for different types, hit enter to get the first best result, or to open it up. You can also search for just simple functions and you can also search for signals. In the network view you have the list of all the different components connected to the component network and you can also click on this small little icon here to open up the type of that component within the reflection viewer. For example you can see the computer, we can now open up in the reflection viewer and it directly shows the computer case. You can also click on the constructor here instead and it will directly show the constructor. You can also do this in the Lua CPU UI to open up the components in the reflection view. This allows for a way faster way of, code, uh, of coding because you can just directly look up the different functions of the components you are trying to access. This was a lot to take in about the reflection view of fixed networks and how it shows the different kinds of functions and properties components of fixed networks may have and how you can use it to know how you can interact with the different game mechanics. Thank you very much for watching. I was Panoru from CodeD from Mesbats and say bye bye until next time and as always, keep coding!